To get us started, I've prepared the exercise files which you can get at github at ssd-tutorials forward slash view hyphen form hyphen component. You can either fork it and clone it or simply download uh, compressed files uh, directly to your machine. Once you've done it, extract it to the directory that you're going to be using for this project. Because of the ever-changing nature of code within the packages and different libraries, you may sometimes see discrepancies between the exercise files, what's in the exercise files, and what's on the actual recording. Whenever possible, I will describe the change, but if you see this sort of changes, obviously don't panic. Uh, it's only been updated because obviously the newer version of the package has been provided and code had to be changed in order for everything to work. Now let's have a look at the package, the JSON. Uh, within the package, the JSON, the packages, the, the main package that we're going to need for this exercise will be Axios, uh, then Laravel Mix to compile all the assets, as well as Vue. I'm also using foundation for sites. If you're using Bootstrap or any other framework for styling, perhaps using your own custom styling, then obviously you will not need this. All the other dependencies have been installed uh, automatically because they are required by these other packages. So if we now close it, next let's have a look at our resources directory, assets and SAS. Here you will see our entry point is app.scss. With three imports, we are first importing Google Fonts, this Roboto Condensed, then default Zerb Foundation settings file, as well as our components file. Let's close this file and have a look at the settings. Within the default Zerb Foundation settings, I only prepended this Roboto Condensed font to this body font family variable. Components.scss file, here what we have is the import of the main foundation file and including some of the Zerb Foundation components, which we will be using during this course. Then we also import some custom components. Let's quickly have a look at these within the components directory. First one is the form, which is adding some styling to the to the form itself, uh, things like the validation color, alert is the red, then vcloak when the component isn't quite ready, make sure that it's not being displayed. Form uh, for the transitions for the text area input and select. From the select, we have the default height set to 7 REM for the multiple one only. Then invalid flag on any of the inputs, as well as the CK editor wrapper will have this border color again set to red. Checkbox group, we have some styling for this as well. Okay, so that's our form. Then we have for the layout is just to show the layout of the page, some default styling. Obviously, you may ignore this completely. Then top dialog is this dialog that shows when we trying to submit the form, whether it's a confirmation or error or anything like this. This is the styling that's going to be used together with this component. We also have editor.scss file, which will be used together with the CK editor. We import default app file and add some part into top, right, bottom and left of the body tag. So that's all in terms of our SAS files. Then if we open our JS directory, our entry point will be app.js. First, we are importing bootstrap. So let's have a look at this file. The first thing we do here is we register global axis. We attach it to the global window object. Then we add some headers. First one, HTML, HTTP request, and then CSRF token, which we are fetching from the meta tag. If we open our views, template up dot blade you'll see we have this stack here right at the top and this csrf underscore token generates some random token to be used with together with the form requests then we have a view which we also set globally so we can access this from anywhere within our script next thing we have directives i've added this directives file which has just a single directive called focus, which will allow us to add focus to any input. Then we import components file, which is currently empty. Lastly, we instantiate view and attach it to the element with the ID app. If we open our app.blade.php file, you'll see that the first tag that's after the opening body tag is the diff with this exact ID. Okay, so that's everything in terms of JavaScript and SAS files. Now let's have a look at our webpack.mix.js file. We are first importing our Laravel mix. Then we are using our entry point files, app.js, app.scss, and editor.scss. And the output will go to public.js and public.scss directories, which we already have here. 
then we are also generating source maps as well as versions and versions by using this method we are generating this mix manifest.json you can see that when we are pointing to a specific file the the actual path that we are going to get will contain the square string with the id and some unique identifier which every time we are going to recompile files will change this is to prevent browser from using a cached file whenever the new version of the file is available okay so that's our webpack.mix now let's have a look at the resources directory again and now views template and app.blade.php we are using this mix helper function to import our assets so we have this app.scss and app.js but because this mix helper function uses this mix manifest what will actually be printed out will be this string with this id in terms of our roots if we now have a look at the roots uh, so we're going to roots and web.php i've split them into three controllers first one the main controller we have a landing page with the form and then for storing the record when we're going to be sending the request using the pulse method this store method then we're going to have three methods for the multi checkbox controller first one the landing page with the form then we're going to removing the record with the destroy using the post and then any whether it's going to be post or get method for the export for the dependable dropdown controller we're going to have uh, three methods index attributes and store index will display the form posting to attributes will get us attributes of the next dependable dropdown menu and then the last one post as well to send the request with the data we've selected there are a couple of things that i've added to this laravel installation first one is this custom helpers file which contains two functions first one is is empty which basically checks whether the value is empty and it's not numeric so if we pass zero it's not going to be empty and then is not empty which is using is empty but negates it so that's our helpers file this has been registered within the composer.json you'll see i've added this files entry here for this helper and the next thing is the way we are actually going to be returning the validation errors from the request by default a lot of our json validation errors are formatted in the following way we have a message with some default message and then we have errors and errors contain fields with associated error messages now this works fine with just server-side validation however if we also use javascript validation not on the client before we actually send the request to the server this would mean that we have to duplicate the same message in two different places to overcome this problem the best thing to do would be if our request actually send the response in the following format now rather than having the message we have the index of the rule that failed what this allows us to do is to have validation message within the view and only reveal it with javascript when the given validation rule failed to tackle this i've overwritten two uh, methods on the default validator of laravel first one is validate using custom rule that's for custom rules that we might be creating we only have a single one for the password here and then we have add failure method let's have a look at how they work first of all we check in if the validation has failed because we have this exclamation mark before passes and if it, ex it doesn't expect the json then we are returning the default behavior otherwise what we are doing is for failed rules we set the rule as index and we set it to an empty array then for the messages what we're doing we simply uh, are adding the rule itself now for add failure similar situation we check if it doesn't expect json if it doesn't then we are returning the default behavior the default which comes with laravel otherwise what we're doing is we are just adding the rule itself as a message and parameters for the failed rules so that's it in the validator I've also added the rule contract so then if we go to the rules you'll see our password has a pattern and we have a message and because we are implementing this rule contract we also have to have a separate rule method which returns there if we just go back to the validator you can see we are calling this rule method on the rule instance that's why we can obtain the the actual rule name okay so if we close all these files I obviously had to register this 
new validation service provider within the app.php file, you'll see that I've removed the, the original validation service provider and added the custom one. So these are the only additions and changes to the original Laravel installation. Now that we have checked all this, let's open the terminal and first start by installing all composer dependencies. So composer install, and that will install all dependencies or packages that we require for our project. Once this has been done, next thing will be npm install to also install all JavaScript dependencies. And lastly, we need to copy the env.example to env and then run php artisan key generate and now if we open our project in the browser you'll see we have the landing page with the navigation we've seen in the introduction video